In this video, we are going to construct a concatenation algorithm that's far more complex than we did in the first module. Our first objective is to explore using the code block for strings and numbers. In our first code block, we'll start with the number 0, followed by a semicolon, and below that we'll make a string 0 by typing in a quote 0, the number 0, and then quotation mark with a semicolon. Just below that we will type in the number 2 with a semicolon, and just below that we'll do a string 2, except typing it out alphabetically, quotation mark, T-W-O, quotation mark, semicolon, and then click out of the code block to accept. We're going to do two different concatenations here. We're going to try to concatenate the first and the third output. And those would be the ones that show up in blue as a zero and a two. And then we're going to try a second concatenation of just the ones that are showing up in brown, which would be the zero with quotation marks and the two with quotation marks. And then hit run. In order to make viewing the results of my explorations more user-friendly, I'm going to use a series of watch nodes throughout the video. And that's found under the library by typing in watch. And I'll connect the string output of both concatenations to a separate watch node for each one. And then hit run. What you'll find is that the first concatenation gave us an error. It shows up yellow with a, a note or tag at the top of it that when we hover over it, it says one or more of the input types are not matching. And the watch node that follows says null. This means that there is no resulting information that's being fed to the watch node at this time. In the bottom concatenation, what you see is that the number zero processed, but it processed as a string. So our watch node shows a number zero followed immediately by a TWO. If we wanted to process the first and the third outputs, those would be the blue zero and two, we would have to use a mathematical operator or some other node that actually processes numerical inputs. In the library under operators, you can see that we have simple nodes that will perform a series of tasks, subtraction, multiplication, division, addition. All of these would be examples of numerical operators. For this exercise, I'm going to add the zero and the two, and then hit run. And you'll see that now our top watch node shows the numerical value of two. What we've just developed is a very simple algorithm where we've constructed information and then further modified that information based on a certain rule set. That rule set only performs one step of operations right now. However, in the future, we're going to wind up having algorithms that create many tens or hundreds of operations in one definition. What you see on screen is what I like to call the algorithm development method. We as users of Dynamo are tasked with constructing data. And by data, I mean it could be geometry or it could be numbers or parameters or families within Revit. We generate this information through a series of inputs. The next step in the algorithm is to deconstruct that information, which basically means to isolate certain components that we need to create a compound relationship. For example, if we're having a structural system designed, structural systems usually have a node or an analytical center point at the center of every structural connection around which the shape of all of the structural components is modeled. What we would be isolating in this case is either the shape that's meeting that point or the point itself. And then we are tasked with taking that isolated information and reconstructing it into something new. While we may have taken the center points off of the structural model, 
we can use that as a datum point for us to begin designing our curtain wall or something to that effect. In our next demonstration, we're going to explore a more complex system of concatenation, one which depends on list structures in order to organize the data that's being passed through. This is essential to understand before we move into developing an architectural definition because of the complexity of understanding how the groups or packets of information are listed. One of the best ways that I've found to explain this to a new user is that it's similar to a typical user folder system. On the right, you see a group of files. Well, that group of files is actually a list of files, which lives within the folder CSE. Now, the CSE folder is within a list of folders. And that list of folders is within study materials. Study materials is within its own list of folders and so on and so forth all the way back up. In this definition, we only have to worry about one or two levels of lists rather than four or five. Let's get started. I'm going to use two code blocks in order to generate sentence fragments that I will concatenate at a later time. For now, the beginning of my sentences will start out with I would followed by you can, followed by we should. It's important to remember that at the end of your sentence fragments, at least for the first part of your sentence, leave a space, otherwise it will be missing when your sentence gets combined later. Our second code block will be the end half of our sentence, and I will complete my sentences with the fragments play baseball, have an awesome day, and declare Batman is better than Superman. I mentioned a second ago that we're going to be working with lists. This information technically is not in a list because each output has a separate connection. What we need to do is create a list out of three separate outputs. And if you recall from our description of the various node types, we have this node called list.create that allows us to add two more inputs so that we can feed all three of our sentence fragments in. And we'll do this for both our first and second code blocks. So now, very simply put, if we do another list create, before we complete any kind of algorithm here, add a watch node onto the end of one of your lists and hit run you'll find that your list is generated as an index count of items that begins with zero, and then one, and then two. This comes out of computer programming languages. For those of us who are not programmers, and we only use this in the field of architecture, we must remember that the zero is the first index item, not one. It's very important. So now what I wanna do is create a list of both of these lists. With my next list.create, I'll connect both of my list create lists and then add a watch node to the end and hit run. Now my lists are organized into main lists with an index of zero and one, and then a sub list with an index of zero to two. And this is called a list of lists. So right now we haven't really performed a concatenation. We haven't joined any of the sentence fragments together. With the string.concat node, we can combine the first list and the second list, and then add a watch node to the end, and hit run. You can see that it didn't behave the way that we would have expected. The first list of I would, you can, we should, all concatenated into one incomprehensible sentence. It says, I would, you can, we should and then our sentence fragments for the end half of the sentence all concatenated into one giant line of text at the bottom. What this tells us is that the concatenation is actually reading the first group or list of strings and concatenating them all together. So we, as the user, now need to figure out how do I pair up the zero of I would with the zero of play baseball. And that's done by using a different list modification node known as list.combine. 
List.combine comes preloaded with three inputs, the first of which is the combinator. It doesn't have much of a description, and I'll explain it in a moment. The second two are the list1 and list2, and you can add on as many lists as you need to in order to complete your task. In this case, that's our first and our second list create nodes. The combinator, as I said, doesn't really have a description, but what it requires is another list.create that's plugged in that already has two preloaded items. From this point, add a watch node to the end, hit run, and see the results. In this iteration, we have three lists that are properly organized so that index zero of list zero reads I would, and index one of list zero reads play baseball. So we're a little bit closer. At this point, we can plug in a string dot concat to the end of our list dot combine and run it, and the watch node at the end will now read properly our list zero, it's our only list, shows I would play baseball, you can have an awesome day, we should declare Batman is better than Superman. If you ever find yourself in a position where you're given pre-sorted information and you as the user then need to resort it back out into its original groups. For example, if I have my list producing what you see here, but I need to organize it so that I can get my first sentence fragments separate from my ending sentence fragments. I'll need to use list.transpose. Once that's plugged in and you plug in a watch node, hit run, and you'll see that it has resorted the information so that it goes back to its original position. There are many ways of modifying these kinds of lists, and we've only just scratched the surface of a few of them. The absolutely essential lesson that we must walk away from this course with is how to manage lists.